Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. Now, coming up very soon is the Ludam Dari 42 Game Jam, a massive game creation event where devs from all around the world will get together and try making a game in 48 to 72 hours based on a given theme. Now, I've done the two previous Ludam Daris and absolutely love the experience. It's an epic challenge that will get you creating non stop for dozens of hours. And by the end of it, yes, chances are high, you'll be exhausted, but you'll also be proud to have made something in such a short period of time, or at least happy to have had such a crazy experience. And as an amazing bonus, once the event completes, you'll have a huge community of game creators rating your game and giving you helpful feedback. So yeah, as you can see, I'm a huge fan of game jams. Not only do they push you to your limits and help you connect with an awesome community, but because of that very real deadline, in the case of Ladam Dare, 48 hours, you have no time to procrastinate or act lazy. It's just you, your teammates, and the game you're making. Now, having loved Ladam Dare so much, I couldn't wait four more months for the next. So I did the meta game jam, and six weekly game jams, each time coming up with a little game, a new experience. Basically, I recommend any game developer out there to give game jams a shot. It's an intense, epic challenge like no other. So with that said, in today's video, I'll be sharing with you some cool tips on how to make a game in 48 hours. And I don't mean an A to Z guide on making a game such as do this, then this, then this. I mean how to make a game in a weekend the cool way. How to make the most out of any game jam you enter. Ways to have fun, to challenge yourself, break out of your comfort for zone and hopefully end the jam feeling fulfilled and better as a developer. So first of all, try new things. Now of course if you've never done a game jam as short and intense as Let Them Die before, the new thing is the challenge. It's making a game in 48 hours. But if you're an experienced creator, even someone having already done two or three game jams before, then try and breaking out from your comfort zone. If you've already made several platformers, then try not making yet another platformer. Or if you really can't help yourself, at least change drastically the visuals or animation style, or add a really cool new mechanic to keep things fresh. I feel that game jams are at their very best when you're doing something new. If you've only ever made crazy action games, then why not create a strategy base building game? Or have a go making a thoughtful puzzler. There's just really no point making a simple top down sure when you've already made 5 in the past. You won't have fun and you won't gain much out of the whole experience. So just remember that game jams are short, so really take risks. If you've never made a puzzle game before and believe you'll hate the process, still give it a go, try. Worst case scenario, you do hate making puzzle games, but that's fine. At least you tried and the pain only lasted a short weekend. End. Tip number two, to have a great game jam, share your work. Now this can be during, after, or even a bit before the start of the jam. Basically talk to other devs about what you're making, share screenshots of your game, express the struggles you're facing, and what's been done and still needs to be done. Because after all, another big part of what makes game jams awesome is the community. It's meeting face to face or simply online new people and getting their feedback sometimes even praise or helpful criticism. Now, you can share your game jam journey with others in a number of different ways. You can join a Discord server, post screenshots on social media like Twitter, make blog posts on the actual Ladam Dari website, or even live stream yourself making your game. Now, of course, don't spend hours and hours chatting and tweeting instead of creating. All you really need during the event is a handful of minutes to share with others how you are doing and also type out a few comments, encouraging fellow devs and giving your thoughts on how their games look so far. And of course, once the game jam is over, Try rating games and giving in-depth reviews of other people's creations. People will love you for it and will in turn give you feedback. I promise this will really make a big difference in how much joy you get out of the jam. The more you feel part of this epic community, going on a mad game creation adventure together, the happier and more excited you'll be. Don't isolate yourself, just give feedback, take screenshots, write, tweet, and get feedback in return. Heck, you can even make a behind the scenes video or a detailed blog post of your game creation adventure, which I certainly have loved doing every single time. It's a way to connect with the community, introduce others to the magic of game jams, and also a very nice way to think back on your experience, ponder on what went well, what didn't, and what you would like to improve. Next up, finish your game. 
Now there's no doubt that a lot can go wrong during a jam, which can lead up to you not finishing your game. Now of course having tried is already amazing, but chances are high you'll feel frustrated and unfulfilled which may result in you never participating in another jam, losing confidence or simply having a crappy memory of the whole thing. Just remember that you can make a game even with only a few hours remaining. Never give up, give it your all right up until the end. It's entirely possible you got stuck for an entire morning, no game idea coming to mind or that you spent a day making a buggy mess. That's fine. Start up a new project and keep going. Even if that new project is a silly little idle clicker, that's just so much better than nothing. And you'll end the jam feeling that much cooler and happy. During my very first game jam, I spent almost the entire first day working on a very crappy game I ended up quitting. With half of my time gone, I began a new project and ended up finishing it well in time and earning loads of great feedback and an awesome, happy feeling. I've practiced since then making mini games in 4 hours and that too is fun and entirely possible. So in short, don't make any excuses for not finishing a game. Give it your all, it's really never too late. Of course, to finish a game in 48 hours, it must be small. Dreaming up something big and very ambitious during a game jam will either result in a total buggy nonsense or will simply result in nothing at all. So as you've probably heard hundreds of times before, think of something small and then make that. And obviously, small doesn't mean boring or shallow. It means making one great enemy or level instead of dozens of crappy ones. It means polishing that one mechanic or interaction until it feels great and fun, instead of making multiple crappy ones. Also, focus on your strengths. Now, this may seem like the contrary of what was said at the start of the video, where I stressed the importance of taking risks and trying new things. But to be clear, don't jump into a project that will be technically very challenging to pull off if you're not much of a coder, or work on an art-heavy project if you're a programmer. It can result in you getting discouraged or getting some apparently unsolvable coding bug, stopping you from advancing on your game. If you're an artist and animator, then try making something that will push your artistic skills skills to their limits, or push your art in a different direction, making something dark and gritty instead of cartoony and colourful, or use your drawing skills to make a funky looking card game instead of your usual side view platformer characters. If you're more of a programmer, compensate your lack of drawing slash modeling skills and dream up cool mechanics, stories and games that will represent some fun technical challenges for you to overcome and learn from. Now of course this all depends on you, you can very well enter a game jam as a programmer wanting to have fun making loads of art, and that's fine and even cool, but again there is that risk of not finishing what you started and ending the weekend on a rather sour note. Game jams are epic challenges, but they're also awesome ways to have fun. So do what you like doing most. And in most cases, what you like doing most is what you're good at. So focus on that and have a great time. Last tip to have a great game creation weekend. Take breaks. I don't believe it possible to fully enjoy the game jam and give it your all if you spend 48 hours straight staring at a screen. Yes, game jams are incredibly challenging and intense, especially Ladam Dari, but you should still try and make the time to go out, sleep, and even eat proper food. You'll feel that much more energized and motivated and not get burned out. Plus, you'll not contract tunnel vision and become oblivious to any of your game's flaws. By doing some sport and taking a break, not only will you be more productive, but the time spent away from your game will also get you seeing your creation in a whole new light. Previously hidden bugs will become apparent, the cool little ideas will pop into your head. Quality game creation, that's really what you need, more so than quantity. And that's it! If you keep these tips in mind and try your best to apply them, you'll have an awesome time during your future game jams. Here's a list of the top ones coming up in the near future. For a lot more info on them, check out the links in the description. And of course, I'll be doing all the jams featured in this list and make a detailed behind the scenes video on each game I make. With that said, if you want to stay up to date with new videos coming out and support me and my channel, Channel, then hitting the like and subscribe buttons would be awesome. It would also be wonderful if you considered supporting me financially like these top supporters via Patreon. Alright, stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers. <laughs>